we're kicking each other, we're all really close together. And above water, you have to have this poised, like, nothing's wrong, I'm just swimming. I'm not in 17 feet of water, you know, it's, it's fine. If it looks easy, then we're doing our job correctly. The U.S. National Synchronized Swim Team does make this look easy. Maybe that's why every four years, the question inevitably gets asked. Is synchronized swimming a real sport? Your head's a little bit sharper though. For anyone who says no, the girls on this team have one response. Try it. <laughs> yeah, you get in the pool for 12 hours, get upside down, hold your breath, and get back to me. I'm Sean Gregory, sports writer for Time. Armed with a waterproof camera, I decided to join the women in the pool. Not for 12 hours, but long enough to get a few lessons on what it takes to perform an Olympic caliber routine. Okay. <laughs> they started me off with a simple lesson, how to tread water correctly. Is that right? Well, let's so we'll think of it as like one, two, one, one two, one, or five. That's, right. That's better. Yeah, right. That's better. A typical day of training for these women involves around eight hours of treading water, but it begins on land with a combination of stretching, weightlifting, and cardio exercises. The connection between the water and what we do on land is actually a lot closer than a lot of people think. Um, if we're not strong on land in general, well, then we can't do what we do every day in the water. The team, made up of 10 women from around the country, has been working here in Indianapolis for the last four months to perfect this routine. Guided by their coach, former Olympic bronze medalist Mayu Fujiki, the team meticulously works through each beat of their routine using a number. And everybody listens to the music a different way. So what we're doing by counting is like nailing the moments with the music. So they understand the music, but in the same time they know by count, one is here, two is here, and three, instead of like la la la. So that's one strategy to make them synchronize. I reluctantly followed the team away from the safe edges of the pool and tried to learn a few moves. We started with a common position in a routine called a ballet line. Two legs, if you want. We can get ready. All right, ready? Up. That easy. Followed by a breaststroke kick, which swimmers use to thrust themselves out of the water or in my case, almost drowned. <laughs> Finally, they offered to lift me out of the water. Okay. So you can use your hands to kind of stabilize yourself, but your feet are going to be in our hands. All of your hands? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then what are you going to do to me? <laughs> Typically, it is the smallest person on the team, called the flyer, who gets lifted. Not a gangly, six foot three inch man with limited aquatic coordination. I should have flipped. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, my training was done for the day. The women on this team aren't so lucky. They have a heavy regimen between now and the Olympic qualifying tournament next month in London. On top of their 50 hour training weeks, the synchronized swimming team must pay half of its team budget through fundraising appeal. <laughs> It's not glorious going to the Olympics sometimes, being here by yourselves no. for eight hours. Just talk about that journey a little bit. Most people don't understand the daily level of sacrifice. And, you know, occasionally you run into somebody who gets it, and it's really nice to kind of have that respect for a few minutes. But for the most part, really we look to each other, most of all, for support um, to get through, like, the daily grind. For Time Video, this is an exhausted Sean Gregory in Indianapolis. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.